a Flipboard, which lets you uh, look at the uh, Twitter and Facebook in a new way. We have Siri, which came out in January, that lets us talk to our phones and get all sorts of neat information or have a personal assistant that will help you find a taxi or uh, find a movie ticket tonight. The problem is, both of these are not the web, and they're both in Steve, they're both putting us into Steve Jobs' trunk. For instance, I can ask Siri to find me a restaurant. It works great for that. But if I ask it how many Foursquare users are checked in today at La Web, it doesn't do so well at that. Steve Jobs is in control of the information that we have access to. And I'm very proud to have Mitchell Baker on stage. She saved us from Bill Gates' trunk six, seven years ago. Can you do it again? Absolutely. In fact, the future for the web has as much potential now as it ever did, maybe even more. And to be clear, it's you know nice of you to say I saved the web, but in fact, it's Mozilla and a lot of people and, and many in the room. Uh, but I, I agree, there are new challenges to the web. Uh, some of them are quite alluring. I, I think the risks to them are long-term, and we're notoriously short-term, most of us, and I'm thinking. Uh, but yes, the web is there. The web is still exciting. Uh, there's new things. The web is changing. And so I, I haven't written it off in the sense that it totally needs to be saved yet. Yep. But there certainly are interesting new things happening. Uh, I actually think of the models that you've described should be not something different from the web, but new form factors or new ways of accessing the web. They're not in the Apple model. They're quite separate, but they should be. And so one of the things that we've started conceptually this year and that Mozilla will be investing in pretty significantly in the coming year is what's the model that combines apps? What's an open app system look like that integrates with the web and is of the web? Yeah. Uh, we don't actually have a model for that right now. We have the Apple model and millions of people trying to know too many. Many organizations trying to copy or duplicate the Apple model, but, but I haven't seen anybody other than Mozilla say, what does it really look like to have what's good about apps that merge and integrate with the web? Well, we'll come back to the web, the web bat, or the uh, app battle that's happening right now with Chrome and with Firefox. Um, is HTML5 up to this challenge? Is it going to be something that keeps developers interested in the web and building for the web? Um, compared to Objective-C and all the other technologies that are on, on mobile and on, on these new slates? Yeah, well, well, we certainly think so. First of all, that, that HTML5 uh, and the new things that will continue to come after that can compete well with proprietary or other technologies. And also that in combination with what the web has to offer that aren't available, as you described. You can make something beautiful there, but you can't make it integrate with the web well. So that combination is, is a winner, and I, and I brought something very short, maybe 60 or 90 seconds, to show uh, this about what HTML can let us do that we haven't seen yet. And let's see this up on the, on the screen. This okay. is a web page, right? This is not a video we're seeing. This is live web co uh, yes. Uh, content. Yes, that's absolutely right. We're, we're going to watch here a web page for a bit. Okay. If you can play the web page. So this is a web page running in a browser in real time, computed in JavaScript as we're watching it, and connected to the internet. And because it's connected to the internet, we can pull in live content real time from the internet. So we have a 3D scene. These photos here are from the Flickr photo stream from the web, the photos we've been taking the last day or two. The tweets. The tweets are from the tw Twitter stream as well. We can also do video integrated in here. Now the, the web video this year is Flash, so we can't pull it in because again it's proprietary and, and doesn't integrate, but we can with open video pull video in real time. So by next year we hope to see open video from the web streaming into web pages just like this as well. So, 
So next time you hear that the web can't do something, you know, step back and look around and, and don't believe it. And next time you hear that the web doesn't matter, think about what it's like to be able to easily, using HTML and JavaScript and CSS, pull live web content into scenes like this. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the HTML5 uh, technology underneath this. How hard is how different is it from the web I grew up? Because I, I used to hand code HTML1, right? Which this doesn't look like that <laughs> underneath. How, how hard is it for a developer to learn this new technology and build something like this? There's a learning curve, absolutely. Uh, but, but because it's actually not new technology, it, it's HTML and JavaScript and CSS. So it's not as, actually as hard as you would think it is. It's, it's not diving into new languages. So if your hand coding of HTML5 is cutting and pasting text and tags, there'll be a bit of work. But if you're building websites, uh, which certainly many people still do and have, have uh, expertise with that, then you're way ahead of the curve. And I think you'll actually find it much easier than it looks to put together. Yeah. In the six years since the web has started, Mozilla has really been at the forefront of browser technology. Uh, Firefox, I remember working at Microsoft and, and banging on Dean Hakamovich, who ran the Internet Explorer team, and saying this, this new browser called Firefox is really going to change our business, and you better pay attention to it. We better reinvest in the Internet technology. And, and to your credit, you got them to do that, right? Internet Explorer 9 now is a competent web browser, finally. Um, yeah, we, we view that as a success. Actually, one of Mozilla's successes is to drag a bunch of other organizations and companies into the modern world. Yeah, but now, <laughs> but today, let's be honest, Mozilla is facing competition that it hasn't seen in those six years, right? Google Chrome is uh, my web browser of preference for the first time in the last year, mostly, partly for two reasons. One, speed, and two, user interface simplicity. I like the simplicity. What is Firefox going to do to innovate to keep people uh, here interested in, in using your products? Actually, I think you've asked two questions. The yep. One is, uh, what are we doing to innovate? And the other is, what about a set of features that you're particularly drawn to? Uh, so for, I'll answer that one first. So speed, um, uh, we're all pretty much in the same game now if you check out Firefox 4 and the betas. So uh, you know, one of the things that Mozilla has always said is we're about building competition in the web as platform. And we are, again, uh, maybe a little like Matt, we're a nonprofit organization, really to our core. And you know, we have legal structures, we have a taxable entity, but, but we, we actually think of everything we do as this nonprofit. And so competition is part of what we're about. Now, it makes it harder, like you have to compete well. So, uh, but, but we welcome not only the uh, improvement in IE9, but also competition, because you do your best when you have to do your best. Uh, so so um, the current versions of Firefox 4 are just as fast. Check them out, you'll find. Um, I, th I think that one, uh, different browsers will be faster on different things, but it, it won't be noticeable. Uh, on the, you particularly like the one feature of the combined search box. Yeah. So may maybe we'll do that one, maybe we, we won't. You know, whenever you have competition, there's often a set of people who like one feature and that will drive them. But, but in the broader question of how do we distinguish ourselves, how do we innovate, and how do, how do, how do we compete, that, that's the last one. Um, there, there, there's a set of things. So, so we will see, I hope, I mean, I hope that we continue to see interesting technical innovations come out of Google. I mean, let's hope so. That much money and that many smart people. And I mean, they have a bunch of data about how we use the web. So I hope to see that, and I think that's good for all of us. Uh, there will be a bunch of innovations that come out of Mo Mozilla as well. Uh, in, in the innovation side, the area where I think you will see Mozilla look different from everyone else is that the focus of our innovation is much more integrative across the web. We're not trying to integrate our browser with our business stack or our services. We're trying to build a, an innovative way for people to manage an experience across multiple websites. And, and let's talk about that, that, that one search box that I like that uses URLs and search terms is integrated totally with Google, right? And it, we can't take that out and put Bing in there. And with Firefox, we're, you're the Switzerland of the internet, right? You're not going to choose one winner over the other. Right? That's right. In, in fact, when Firefox first shipped, we had the search box, 
And we had Google and Yahoo and a few others in there. To my knowledge, that is the first product that ever had Google and Yahoo in the same product. And that was a fundamental deal term, where, where it was not the norm at the time. Every, everyone you talked to and every offer was only exclusivity. And that was one of my fundamental terms, that we would not build what you just described. Where you get a browser and not only is it a default, you know, you have an option, but you're tied to one provider whether you want it or not. Uh, so that's one area that's become standard. Uh, and then there are other areas, again, I, th I think apps is one, probably identity, who am I, how do I identify myself to the world, that's something that should be available across the web. Yeah. Right? I mean, many of us are very happy using Facebook as an identity, but maybe there should be places and options where we're we might not want to use it or it ties in differently or we have some control. Well, and, and there you're seeing new competition from Rockmelt and uh, uh, Flop that are trying to build a browser for the Facebook person. Are we in danger of getting locked in another trunk with Facebook in that way? And uh, what, what are, are your ideas of where the social web is going and do we need a new rethink of the browser for that new user? Again, you got Three two questions. Yeah, I have two many questions for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you're ahead of me because I counted two. But um, do we need? To, uh, should the browser change? Yeah. And are we locked in with identity? I think uh, are the two. I'll I'll start with the identity one first. Um, well, yeah, I, I think we're at, at risk of being locked in with identity. Uh, but uh, I think to think about that, let's let's assume for a moment. Um, all the things that Ethan said yesterday are even truer than he said them. That Facebook is a great company, that it's very focused on privacy issues, that it really cares about user trust, and that user convenience are the core of the offering that they're trying to build. Let's just stipulate that's the case. I say that's still not enough. However great and remarkable a company Facebook is, I don't want it to own me. And that's Mozilla. So. And, and so I, there, there should be a layer, and I think Mozilla is the place to put it, where I have some basic identity. There's some, I shouldn't say Mozilla, Mozilla is the place to offer it and demonstrate it and hope that many will adopt it. But there's some basic criteria of who I am and how do I identify myself to the web that I have control of. And that needs to integrate really well with Facebook because that's where, where most people are. You know, and I will say that I'm, I'm not, I, I don't pose this as opposition to Facebook and I don't think, I you don't know, Ethan or others would jump up and down and be unhappy about it. It's not meant, yeah, it's just meant to say that I have some option and I can own myself. But so, I mean, with the Rockmelt browser, just to open up the browser, I need to sign into Facebook, right? And that, that is I, a, a danger to the web, isn't it? Well, simply having the choice to do that isn't necessarily a danger to the web. I think if too many people, if that's the only good choice and too many people adopt it, then they will look up later on and we'll all find out things, things are not so great later on. Um, but but a, a browser that's totally tied to Facebook or useful only in Facebook or you can only get to the web through Facebook may be useful for some people. I mean, some people live in Facebook, so maybe a tool that does that is the right tool. I, I think over time it will be very limited even for those people and just a disaster for those who want to live outside of Facebook at least some of the time. Yeah. Uh, but I guess that's the second part of the question is I, I use Seismic or TweetDeck or I, I'm, right. I'm using a lazy scope right now on, on my computer in the front row. Those are not browsers. They're not the web. They're, but they're surfacing Facebook, Twitter, and RSS to me in a new way. Do we need a rethink of the browser yeah. for that? Yes, I, I think so. Uh, I don't even like the word browser. Uh, it's 15 years old, and I mean, I've been working on browsers since most of those 15 years. Uh, so I know uh, it's really ancient, and, and I think browser is the wrong word, and the way we think about it is much too concrete. Um, we don't browse anymore, for sure. And when we think of the browser, like a general consumer thinks of the box that we see, or the screen with the buttons, and then the techie and tech-savvy folk think of the technology and the rendering engine underneath it. Um, that, of course, will stay. But, but the key to the browser, and the reason it's so important, is that it's been the place where I actually have control, not just over an app, or picking an app, or downloading it, but what's the experience of the web? Like 
How can I customize it? How do I make it myself? How do I own it? Uh, so those are the qualities that, and, and so I'll give one concrete example. We're all familiar now with, you type something in the location bar and you get the um, uh, suggestions of where you've been, your history, so you don't have to go back and search again. That is a very concrete example of managing your experience across multiple websites. It's obvious now we don't think of it that way, but what makes the browser useful is all the different ways in which it's me, not you. And that set of traits, as human beings and as developers, we need to have on the web. So whether it looks like a screen with back and forth buttons or almost no buttons like Chrome or, or, or there's no UI to it at all, that's a, just a, an implementation of how do I control my web experience. Including, I just want to say, what we think, something that looks a little more app-like. Yeah, and that gets back to the apps that we start with. What is this new apps, app experience going to be like in, in uh, Firefox, and how is that going to compete with Google Chrome's app experience? Because they're trying to get us into this new world through the app stores, and so are you, I think. Well, the first thing that's different is we don't think of apps in Firefox. Right? We think of how do people interact with the web, and how do we make that better? So it's pretty clear there's a, there's a bunch of traits about apps that people like. And they may include discovery, installing something, there's kind of an emotional response, it's easy. And then, of course, there's the, the, the very focused nature of the application. You're not getting the whole web, you're getting exactly what you want. Uh, so those things people want. Uh, at the same time, as you as you pointed out, the apps that are available to us today are very limited and very controlled, and they don't integrate with the web, and you don't have the ability to do much with them yourself other than consume them. Customizing them is, is, is difficult. And so that's the merger that we're looking for. Right? Apps can should be uh, you know findable, monetizable, installable, lovable, but still have data that interacts with the web that you can move. And so our view that of what we're trying to create is not a Firefox web app system. Uh, it's an open web app system. It should run on Firefox. It should run on modern browsers. It should run on your mobile device. The data should be able to move. So we have, you know, um, uh, technical specifications and documents and a pretty clear idea of how we think it would work to have things that look and feel like apps that might be single purpose, like Siri, limited purpose, that might be more general, like closer to a website if you want it, that can be found through your mobile device or through a browser, can be installed and, and paid for, uh, but that you can use on multiple devices. There might be multiple app stores. This is a model in which maybe Mozilla should run an app store, but we don't have to. Uh, as the key problem is solving the discoverability and findability and one-click ease and payment. Like, like, we don't feel like we have to be in the middle of it and control it and make a Firefox that, that we, we do not intend to copy that model. Very cool. I think we're out of time based on the clock, but I don't see Loe coming out here uh, bothering me. Um, tell me about, what, are you on? We're, we're out of time? One last question. Um, are you on Twitter, and uh, can we talk to you about these issues, and can we have a dialogue in, in public about where the web is going? Oh, absolutely. Please, I'm at Mitchell Baker, easy to find, and um, still a little under the radar, but I'm sure you can, you'll change that now. I'd, I'd, I'd love it, right? Uh, these, these are questions where the more input we get, the better. We don't have a filter through what our business model or our view of the world is, and so we're trying to get the best we can. Very cool. Thank you, and I uh, hope you prove right that we're not going to get locked in these groups. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to call uh, the web uh, apps next year? Oh, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Come back anytime. Did you enjoy? I have. <laughs> you are. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Platform.